This is the nation of Chas, or the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone, who recently changed their name to CHOP. Chaz is the world's newest nation, or should I say was the world's newest nation. A nation that has already gone down in figurative and literal flames by the time you're watching this video. Chaz was founded in the heart of Seattle by colonists, I mean protesters, some with good intentions, some with bad, who ripped away land from the indigenous population of Capitol Hill in the state of Washington. An act that would make any colonizer or imperialist very proud. What's really interesting is that whenever a group of people try to take away land from an existing nation by force, war almost certainly breaks out. Chaz is a very special case though. Not only did the city of Seattle pull out their police force without a fight. After several days of violent clashes between police and the protesters, officers retreated from the area to de-escalate the tension effectively abandoning their station. But the US government in DC also did nothing as around six blocks of their land was stripped away from them. Like many popular revolutions, Chaz was founded on some very noble causes, ending police brutality, standing up against racism, abolishing the police. Not sure how noble that last one is, with even the mayor of Seattle calling the new nation a summer of love. That is more like a block party atmosphere. It's not an armed takeover. It's not a military junta. Not so noble was the fact that the moment the nation was formed, a border wall was put up, border patrol guards with guns enforced very strict immigration policies, a monarch filled the power vacuum, their own brand of police patrolled the inside with what do you know, their own cases of police brutality. And of course, some good old systematic racism with things like black only safe spaces. The thing is, I'm, I'm half Italian, half Colombian, so do I get a pass to get in there or? Well, this space is right now held for just black folks. Oh, just black, okay, yeah. so full black, you're saying. But don't be so quick to dismiss Chaz because let's face it, every new nation faces their own challenges. We haven't even talked about their form of government, how safe it is for their citizens, if it's a business friendly environment. So you nation builders, let's give Chaz the benefit of the doubt. Let's look at the economy of Chaz. Rapes, robberies, and all sorts of violent acts have been occurring in the area they were not able to get to. Because for the first time in my life in Capitol Hill, I hear gunshots every single night, and I've heard people screaming every single night outside. They're not protest screams. I've heard protest screams, but I've also heard sc like screams of terror out there. At the root of every country and economy is the government. The style of government and the people who run it determines how free the people are, how prosperous the people are, and ultimately how long a country will last. In the case of Chaz or CHOP as they're now calling it, they first identified as an autonomous zone. Now autonomous zone can mean a few things. In China, they have autonomous regions where supposedly the local governments have more rights and control over their land compared to the central government in Beijing. In the case of Chaz, this is definitely not the kind of autonomous zone they're referring to. Most likely, they're modeling the idea of an autonomous zone coined by Hakim Bey, a writer that promotes anarchism. Bey explains that these autonomous zones can be used as a tactic by anarchists to sneak anarchy into formal society and subvert it. Introduce a little anarchy. Or it could just be that these dissenters wanted a cool name and they're just power hungry. In reality, Chaz is more of complete chaotic anarchy with a little bit of monarchy, oligarchy, and direct democracy sprinkled on. Anarchy is pretty simple, there are only a few laws in Chaz and pretty much none of them are written down. They're just generally understood by the populace. Number 1. No police whatsoever except for their own brand of police and when they need help from actual police, of course. Number two, you have to completely submit to their ideology or else you'll be exiled or worse. Who don't matter? This Who don't matter? This so pretty much anarchy. The direct democracy comes into play because the desires of the majority is the only voice that matters. If the angry mob decides to hold a black only safe space, that's what they'll do. No need to deal with pesky representatives or civilized debates or people that disagree with you. No, 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 no. In Chaz, whatever the mob wants, the mob gets. Things move very fast here. Once Chaz was formed, the Chazians found themselves with a new monarch, a warlord that declared his power, Raz Simone. Raz happens to be a rapper that owns million dollar properties in Seattle, drives a Tesla, and apparently has plans to launch businesses in the future. Kinda strange that an apparent businessman would support anarchy, which is bad for business, but whatever. Every movement, every coup needs someone with resources, and Raz is that guy, as shown here with him handing out guns to his minions. Somebody over the age of 18 ought to use a gun? 
But Raz isn't the only one that's power hungry in chess. As there are other people challenging his world, not obeying him, leaders trying to organize things in the background, they even have their own official Twitter account. So we don't know for sure if Raz is really the one in charge over there. If he isn't and there's a group of leaders in charge, that would make Chaz more of an oligarchy. So with the government of Chaz down, let's look at what Chaz produces. You know, what do they make? What are they known for? How does this economy make money? The Swiss are known for banking, chocolate, watches. The Germans are known for their cars and their German engineering. What about Chaz? Being that we don't have official statistics on Chaz's economy, we'll just have to estimate. The biggest industry is probably drugs. After all, there's no rule of law there. You can smoke and shoot up wherever and whenever you want. A lot of Chazines are just there to have a good time, so people are going to need a lot of weed and other drugs to take. I'm going to try to not get a contact high as I'm walking through, as was the case yesterday. There's a lot of weed being smoked uh, yeah. there. and someone actually walked up to us and they said, where can we smoke? And I said, it's Chaz, I think you can pretty much smoke wherever it is you want. Chaz also stressed to be an independent nation that is reliant on foreign imports. So they have a very thriving agricultural industry with their very own illustrious farm. Other industries include street markets, bazaars, a very popular street art culture. And of course, you can't forget about the classic business of extorting local business owners for protection money. We've also received report that these armed people may be demanding payment from business owners in exchange for some of that protection. Our innovative chassis took a page right out of the Mafia's playbook. You don't got my money? You don't got my money? Huh? So far, these are the only businesses and industries I could discover in Chaz. One reason for this is simple. The most important factor for a thriving economy, for an economy to be able to attract new businesses, new entrepreneurs, foreign investors, is stability. After all, if you're an entrepreneur, why would you open up shop if you don't know whether or not your business is going to be burned to the ground tomorrow? Why would you open up shop if the government is unstable, if the country is going to go to war or fall apart soon? Stability is the name of the game here and Chaz has none. But don't lose hope yet because Chaz's economy has one thing that no other nation in the world has. The complete indisputable support from another government. Sure, some countries get a lot of foreign aid, a lot are in alliances with other nations, but to my knowledge, no other country has ever gotten free toilets, 24-7 electricity, running water, emergency medical support, all 100% provided by the government they rebelled against. So in a sense, Chaz's economy is relatively stable. It's bankrolled by the taxpayers of Seattle. Another thing an economy needs is safety. After all, no one wants to immigrate to a place that isn't safe, so let's look at that next. Safety is of utmost importance to Chaz. Since Chaz bans police and police are needed to escort emergency services into their nation, they have to build a very elite group of police, medics, and border patrol guards from scratch. We are going to make these streets safe. We are going to make these streets safe. Everything is good. Okay, that was no, All right, let's get out of here as quickly as possible. We're gonna die here today. We have heard that there are armed people patrolling the streets near 12th and Pine. But let's say you're a Chazian and you get raped or robbed or any other kind of violent crime and you decide that, well, maybe police are okay in this instance, so you call 911. Well, be prepared to wait because they won't be able to get to you. We did it, Patrick! We saved the city! Our 911 uh, response times have tripled in the area. They've gone from just over five minutes to about 18 minutes. However, citizens are allowed to open carry weapons as seen here with a guy swinging around a machete, so just make sure you're packing 24-7. And I really do mean that because the latest news at the time of recording this video show that there have been at least three shootings in and around Chaz. Oh, shit. One of them resulted in a man bleeding to death because police weren't allowed to escort paramedics in. And because Chaz only has a population of around maybe 200 give or take, that means their murder rate per capita is G. 500 per 100,000 people? This means that Chaz has taken the throne from Venezuela as the most murderous nation. Venezuela had a homicide rate of 60.3 per 100,000 people in 2019. Since Chaz has a rate of 500 per 100,000 people, that means Chaz is more murderous by a factor of 830%. Chaz is also very sanitary. You've already seen the porter potty Seattle provided for Lum. The city also sent in cleanup crews at their own expense. Very generous of them. And at one point, Chazians even thought about designating a dedicated area to do drugs. So if you're really into shooting up, start packing your bags, ladies and gentlemen. There's also no pesky things like freedom of religion, so you don't have to worry about outside religions and cultures tainting your own. As seen here with the mob choking a preacher face down.
So you know the government of Chaz, you know the business and economic environment it has. You also know other important factors like how stable and how safe it is. Now the only logical choice is to move to Chaz and make it your new home, right? Well, not so fast. As we mentioned before, the Chaz Empire has pretty much fallen. After the recent shootings, the mayor claims that they're going to take back the police station the mob overthrew and dismantle the entire occupation. Along with that, local residents and business owners are suing the city for abandoning them. So if you're an aspiring nation builder that wants to start your own Chaz, if you can't control the violence, if you can't keep the image of just a peaceful protest, you will be crushed. See, Chaz did the smart thing by changing its name from Chaz the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone to CHOP the Capitol Hill Occupied Protest. Why? Because the leaders of Chaz understood the importance of public image. Their former name Chaz screams, we took over your land and created an independent nation that you should probably invade to protect your interests. The latter screams, this is just a protest. We're still citizens, no need to cut off the taxpayers' money or send in the troops. So what are the biggest lessons to take away from this? Number 1. If you claim to side with the angry mob, whether that's true or not, anything is possible. All your opposition, any authority will bow down to you in submission. And number 2. Before you start your revolution, make sure you have a detailed plan in place to restore order and maintain your power, or else things will very quickly descend into chaos. Oh. Welcome to the Watch the End Club. Just to clarify, not everyone at Chaz wanted to create their own nation. Some of them were there just to have a good time and some of them were there to peacefully protest like I mentioned before. With that out of the way, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing because we make video essays just like this one every single week on the most provocative stuff in the world of business for free. So if you like this video, you'll probably like the other ones. If you want to support this channel financially, check out a course I made on how to land a remote job. That is how I got my start in this whole make money online thing. And that's what I recommend for other people too. If you're wondering if I stole this economics of type video format from a channel called Economics Explained, it's because I absolutely did. Michael over there has a really great channel and you can check it out with, you guessed it, the link below. This video started out as me posting this video idea on Instagram and you guys really wanting it. So here we are. If you want to vote on future video ideas, see some ridiculous memes, more day in the life kind of stuff, you can follow me on Instagram at jaketrend.io. That is going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. I'll see you guys in the next one.